guys, so today I'm going to be discussing the basic or co most common hamster mistakes that hamster owners make. I'm going to try to keep this sort and simple, that's why I'm talking so fast. And let's get started. The mistake people make when owning hamsters is getting a cage like this. If that cage or any type of cage like that is your cage, it's time for a change. That cage is dangerous in many ways. It Hamsters are very stress-prone animals, so it cages like that boost their stress levels and very stressed if they're very stressed hamsters show they can be sick they they can get sick e easier it like lowers their immune system they can get sick they can live shorter lifespans hamsters only live two years and a cage like that can even shorten that lifespan to less than that and that's got to be hard so if your hamster is showing any signs of stress uh, you need to upgrade your cage. So some signs of stress, or that's not true, because Scotty shows signs of my hamster shows signs of signs of stress sometimes, but he has a huge cage. He's just one of those hamsters that has a personality and wants to adventure and have area space to call his has like plenty of space to run around. He has plenty of space to run around. He just I honestly don't know what his, his problem is. He's just a crazy hamster, and I can't give him any more space than he already has. So, if your hamster is constantly showing signs of sh showing monkey barring, bark chewing, biting you when you try to get them, like, afraid of humans, trying to escape their cage, if they're constantly showing those signs and you feel like they're stressed and they're in a cage like that, you need a better cage. So a better alternative for um, a cage like that or especially a cage like that or any other cages like that, any small cages, a better alternative is bin cages. I've seen bin cages that are only, I've seen a bin that's only $10 and then you just cut out a hole in the lid, put some mesh or screen or something like that on the top and decorate it however you want and you're done. That is the best option, I would say, because they can be very cheap. So, I if you have like a ten dollar bin, I had I saw a ninety quart bin that's ten dollars, and then the I'm sure the like the stuff to go on the top, the screen or wire mesh is like also ten five to ten dollars. You got a twenty dollar cage upgrade, and then if you have a small cage like that. Add a tube, only if it's a dwarf hamster, make sure there's big tubes because Syrian hamsters can get stuck in there. Add a tube and there you go. You got a perfect suitable cage and you're still using your old cage. So that is the best option on that part. And um, so yes, the next point we have is having a too small or not safe wheel. Syrian hamsters need at least an eight inch wheel I would say 10 inch is better, 8 inch is really kind of small, but if 8 inch is all you can do, do an 8 inch instead of a 6.5 or a dwarf hamster sized wheel, for instance. Your hamster, if you have a Syrian, probably will not run on your wheel if it's below 8 inches or 9 inches, something like that. Syrian hamsters, female Syrian hamsters tend to get very big, and that kind of wheel that's an eight inch wheel is probably not going to be enough for them. An eight inch wheel is better for Russian Campbell's dwarf hamsters or winter whites. I have a six and a half inch. That is the very minimum for dwarf hamsters because I it's harder to get an eight inch wheel. But I'm sure I could have gotten one. I didn't, and I his wheel is kind of breaking. So once it breaks, I'm going to get him a bigger wheel. And so yeah, that's that for sizing your wheel also needs to have a solid surface that they can run on without getting their feet stuck or getting bumblefoot wire mesh wheels often cause bumblefoot and broken limbs and if they have a broken limb they can literally chew off their leg to stop the pain that's what they think is going to stop the pain <laughs> it's kind of weird but that's a fact so a better alternative is obviously to get a smooth surface and to 
um, keep your wheel big so that they feel comfortable riding on, running on it. So let's move on to the next. Uh, the next major point is if you not providing enough chew toys for your hamster. So if you've you seen them chew plastic, I would probably means get them more chew toys or a bigger cage. Just a hint. <laughs> so. An alternative to that is to get more chew toys. Well, stop it. Yeah, he's in my room having playtime right now. An alternative to get to that is to get more chew toys. You can make chew toys by using cardboard tubes, cardboard boxes, paper, not like the white paper, like brown paper bags and little pieces. So, and those kind of materials are good for them to chew on. So let's move on to the, the next. next point I have is getting food that has atoms and is not good for them. So you want a food that has a variety of different healthy non-processed seeds like Higgins Sunburst is a good option and Vita Smart Food I think it's called. There's a bunch of good options out there but it's kind of up to you and whether you think your food has add-ons in it. Like if you see little pink pieces or like something that looks like it's processed and not really a good seed, throw that food out and get a better one. Is having, so, or next common mistake is having unhealthy, dangerous bedding and not enough of it. Hamsters in the wild burrow feet underground, so they make burrow chambers where they have different chambers for bathroom, bedding, just when they sleep and where they eat and their food storages and stuff like that. So. You should need to have at least six inches, I would say. It's supposed to be, it's at least three inches, but I would say at least six inches as Scotty has 12 inches and he couldn't even do six inches. Or most hamsters can't burrow, burrow in three inches. So three inches bare minimum, six inches is recommended. If your hamster has a pet store cage, like the one I've been showing for the past clips, a pet store cage only gives like two inches of bedding, and that is, or one or two inches of bedding, that is not enough. So make sure you have pan, a good enough pan, pan depth. Bin cages, you can fill it up as high as you want, and you're good to go. So they need that much bedding, and make sure you're not using any wood shavings like pine or cedar. Make sure you're using paper based bedding, and yeah. If you're using pine or cedar, it can cause respiratory infections for your small animal, and that could be fatal. So paper-based, KT, CareFresh, you can even make your own out of toilet paper soaked in water and ripped in tiny pieces. That's unscented, but I just reckon that's going to be a lot of work. So I would recommend just getting CareFresh. It can be a bit expensive on the more expensive side versus pine and cedar, but it's for your hamster's life. And also, make sure to stay away from cotton fluff that looks like, like what you put pillow stuffing it kind of looks like. That can get wrapped around their limbs, and if they eat it, it can internally choke them. So, don't stay, definitely stay away from that. That's a big red flag. And um, let's move on to the next the mistake that people make is putting their hamsters in hamster balls. Putting your hamster in a hamster ball is basically like trapping them in an area and telling them they have to run. Hamster balls have very poor ventilation, and because of that, there's little, they need ventilation, so obviously there's little slits in it, and they can get their legs stuck in that just like they would at the wire or mesh wheel. So you definitely want to stay away from hamster balls. A better alternative to that is free roaming in a hamster safe room. Would not recommend doing this with dwarf hamsters because they're very small and they can get into little cracks and crevices. Don't do this unsupervised, only for a little bit so they have just a little bit of time to get their exercise. But if you have a small cage and you put them in, in, in a free roaming area, it doesn't count. You still need a big cage because they're nocturnal, so they're up all night when you're sleeping and you can't give them playtime. So big cage, small cage, big cage, free roaming does not solve the cage size problem at all. That's just an extra for you to bond and for your hamster to get more time than they would outside into adventure places, like how a rabbit needs to free roam in a room for at least four hours a day. So definitely want to give them that. You can also get them a large playpen for this. It's not easy to escape. 
And um, that's also a good option to put all their toys and stuff in it. And make sure you're supervising them in all of this. And don't do it for that long. Make sure they have food and water and everything in their little play area so they're not, like, dehydrated or, like, anything or hungry when they're in there. And the next common like mistake that people make is buying their hamsters from a pet store. Pet store hamsters most likely come from rodent mills where the where they don't really care about the animal's health and well-being and they just keep breeding and breeding and breeding until they can't no more. And then oftentimes you have bad genetics and stuff like that in the ham in their offspring. So it's best to get your hamster from a high quality breeder or a rescue if you want to help a hamster in need. And let's move on to the next one. mistake is getting is I think it's listening to your listening to getting care from the pet store employees. Pet store employees only ten percent of all pet store employees actually know what they're talking about and that is a true fact. Pets like they just kind of like give what the package says. If the package says it's suitable for hamsters, okay, it's suitable for if it's suitable for your hamster. Just want to make money. I'm not trying to be mean to the pet store employees. Like, I want to be a pet store employee when I can get order to educate people that these cages are bad and not to tell people to get these if they're looking for my help. They don't only just say like, hey, here's your food. Here's your water, here's the cage. If you don't think this cage is big enough, get an add-on. No. If you have a small cage, don't, I'm telling you, don't get another one to add on. That just gives more money into the bad cage making, and it doesn't really do this. They need 450 square inches of unbroken floor space. Adding two cages together that are each 200, a little bit more, in it. If you say it leads up to 450, no, it doesn't. So, don't do that. They need unbroken floor space. A good option would be if you have a small cage and you're like, oh, this is too small. Don't go out and get another one. Go out and get a bin cage and connect that. That's what I would do if I had a small bin cage. And that's what I urge you guys to do. So, if you have a small cage. So, yeah, that's... um this point. The last and final main point is don't, I wouldn't recommend getting people who get their, get hamsters for young children. You might see some of the colorful cages like tiny tails and they look so cute and like, oh, it's like a toy. It's not a toy. A hamster's not a toy. They normally don't like being held. They don't like being cuddled. They most likely aren't going to want your attention. They're not going to urge for your attention like dogs or cats or rabbits would and guinea pigs they don't care they want to have their own space they're up all night when you're sleeping and they basically yeah you might have a strong bond with your hamster like they come to you and stuff but they're not looking for attention like a dog or a cat would they may be i don't know but scotty doesn't he just wants some flower seeds <laughs> he also likes me he likes me sometimes but yeah, so hamsters for small children is, I wouldn't say a best idea because then they can, like, you have to be very fragile. If you're going to get a hamster for your elementary school child or older, just so you know, I'm not in elementary school, I'm in middle school, so I'm, I mean, my hamster's not my hamster, it's the family hamster. Also, you should keep in mind that don't get a hamster for your child to learn responsibility because if you have a small cage, they're not going to want to clean the cage week, full clean the cage weekly and spot clean the cage daily. That's what you have to do in a small cage. So, don't do that. And, um, yeah, if you're going to get a pet, you want a hamster, make it a family pet, not your child's pet. Hey guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I was kind of pushing small cages are bad in this video, especially the one I mentioned I don't know why, but I just, that cage and other cages like that are just terrible, especially Tiny Tails. And yeah, I don't know if you've seen the new Tiny Tails extra large dinosaur cage. It's terrible. So, um, 
I'll leave links in the description bar below to my video where I did up or down to hamster and rabbit cages, to Victoria Rachel's making it DIY bin cage video, and the links to bin bins that end the mesh and everything you would need to make a bin cage. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you have a small cage like this one, I would recommend 100% adding on a bin cage, not any other cage. And um, so I hope you enjoyed this video, you learned something from it, and um, see you guys next time. Bye!